Hey everybody, Coach Mal here. I'm with Keith and his sister Sherry, and Sherry's joining us for the first time. We're going to talk about some possible solutions and recipes for Keith. She does do all the grocery shopping, so it's super important for me as a nutrition coach to have her here because I need to educate her and teach her what foods Keith has to eat to get to his goals. So first off, we're not going to put Sherry on the spot yet. <laughs> First off, we're going to talk to Keith about our meeting last week, um, what he's done since our meeting, and the one thing I am trying to do with Keith is have a gentle approach, but also he knows I'm no bullshit. So, I mean, he knows I'm an expert in my field, and he knows that I can absolutely 100% save his life, but he has to do the work and Sherry has to help me. So we're going to be a team together. So I wanted to um, give Keith about, you know, just a couple of things to address, not change his whole routine in a week, because I know from experience of working with hundreds of clients, if you rip everything away from someone, they're not going to make it. So I'm a huge fan of small changes add up. Tell me what you're doing now, I'll tell you where you'll be for in a year. If you told me you were drinking more water today, I would know that you'd probably be in a better place in a year. You'd have a clearer skin, you'd have better digestion, you would um, experience weight loss, and there's so many things that come with that, and that's one thing. So if you look at the realm of things, if you changed one thing a week, where would you be a year from now? So if you think that at any point, Keith, oh, I'm not doing enough, I'm not being aggressive enough, I beg to differ because anything that you're doing to change is better than what you were doing mm -hmm. and that's what got you here. So um, I met Keith at Leopard Lattes, my coffee shop, thankfully we, we met and we've been friends ever since, so I know that he's a coffee drinker and luckily I know exactly how many calories and sugar are in everything. So I asked Keith, he was drinking a 24 ounce triple caramel latte um, with probably whatever milk they serve, which was 2% or whole milk, correct? I okay. couldn't even tell you okay. what it was. So I told Keith, we can't do the caramel syrup because the two shots of caramel syrup have a boatload of sugar. It's not necessarily the calories in that, it's the sugar content, and that's what's a real problem in the world. So I asked Keith to, um, he, he told me that his doctor said the triple was okay, even though he has had some heart problems, and I'm trusting you on that, Keith. Um, eventually, I would like to bring that caffeine down a little bit, because I think it's just better if you just have a moderate amount of caffeine each day, but we'll address that later. And I asked him if he could switch to non-dairy milk, um, I figured he would like coconut milk because coconut milk does have some natural sugar in it and no, I wanted him to get some stevia and um, where are we at with that? I switched, um, I wasn't sure I should have got a hold of you, but I switched to the sugar-free caramel Okay. and I had them check and there was no aspartame okay. in it. Okay. I don't know what the sweetener was, okay. but I know at okay. least it doesn't have aspartame in it. Okay. Um, I would like to know what the sweetener is. Yeah, I'll check that. If it's Splenda, that's still yeah, it's, not, it's not I know. the greatest. But none, I have, none of it's good. It's, but I have to tell you, it's better than what you're doing. Yeah. And Keith, it may take you going from here to here to here to here. Rome wasn't built in a day. All my healthy habits, habits didn't happen in a day. So if, if that's what you're doing now, I'm okay with it, but just know I'm going to keep trying to get you to, mm -hmm. to a better spot, but go ahead. And I switched to coconut milk, Okay. which was very, I was very surprised at how good it was. It really is. Yeah. It, I, it, I didn't hardly notice any difference in good. flavor, so good. I actually probably liked it more because oh, okay. it was a healthier option. Oh good, I'm glad. Yay. So, and then it took me a few days to ditch the whipped cream. Okay. I didn't think about that. Are you, are you doing iced? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm doing iced, sugar-free okay. with uh, coconut milk. Okay. And, and that's 
completely change that and I, okay. I'm here today so it hasn't killed me changing it. Oh, woohoo! <laughs> if the whipped cream is very important to you, I think I told you they make a non-dairy at Walmart with co one with coconut milk and one with almond milk. So if you're getting the hankering for coconut milk, you can you can try that. I think so. I'll probably get some okay. for the home just for... Yeah. Um, a lot of times if I get a sweet craving, I don't have any in my fridge right now, but I'm going to get some. Um, I'll do some blackberries and just put a squirt of that. I mean, it's better than knocking off a blackberry cobbler. So that's what I always tell people is I think the reason that I'm successful is if I get a hankering for something, I'll get on Pinterest and I'll try to find a recipe. If I'm craving brownies, I'll try to find like a black bean or avocado recipe. Or if I'm craving ice cream, I'll look up a non-dairy. Um, just so you know, Sherry, I'm pretty paleo whole 30, which means I don't do a lot of dairy and I don't do a lot of gluten. Um, occasionally, I may have sparingly a little bit of cheese um, and I'll do fermented cheese like blue cheese and gorgonzola because it goes through my body. And I've put together my own personal nutrition plan based on how foods make me feel. And dairy is definitely um, an inflammatory food. Um, generally, I don't see weight loss occur um, with individuals that have a lot of dairy in their life. So- Would you consider a lot of uh, dairy? A lot of dairy? Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe cereal with milk in the morning, a sandwich with cheese, and like, I mean, I don't do any dairy, so it, it's just with all of my experience, it's preventing people from their goals. Um, if people are super disciplined, like, are you thinking about yourself? Yeah. Okay, so how much dairy do you have in a day, a month? I will probably drink about this every other day, or... Of milk. Meat meat. Uh -huh. Well, milk is the worst, I'm going to tell you, because milk has sugar in it. Mm -hmm. What kind of milk? Whole milk. Whole milk is the worst. It's super high in fat. So, um, I'd love to see you switch to non-dairy. Um, I'm a true believer in the only people that need to be drinking milk are infants and animals that are trying to grow twice their size. Humans do not need milk. It's really bad for you. What as a coffee shop owner, what was crazy for me, I think I told Keith this last week, is people are so uneducated about milk. Mm -hmm. And they used to cruise through Leopard Lattes and they used to say, can I get a skinny vanilla? There's nothing skinny about it. What happened when, there, when, when we went through that era of fat-free, everything tastes like shit. Yeah. So in order to make it, it taste better, they added sugar. Actually, a cup of non-fat milk has 12 grams of sugar in it. Sherry, would you rather get your sugar from something a little bit more satisfying, like a cookie, than your milk? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it, it is hard to, to switch over. <coughs> but yeah, milk, milk's not doing anybody any favors. So um, that, that's just my spiel on dairy. Um, I've had so many people go through the Whole30 program, and it's... 30 rigid days of just eliminating sugar, eliminating dairy, eliminating gluten, and all these anti-inflammatory foods, and it's life-changing. At the end of the 30 days, it takes that long, their health is improved, their cravings are gone, it tames the sugar dragon, they've, you know, lost a lot of inflammation, uh, they've lost a little bit of weight, and then what they do is they say, if you want to reintroduce it, you reintroduce it one thing at a time. The first week after the Whole30, you bring in your milk. How did you do with it? How did you feel? 99.9% .9 of the time, people realize that it actually, so you're creating your own nutrition um, plan based on how the food affects your health. And it's hard to tell when you have all these things in your life. But when you narrow it down, and, and most people are like, oh man, I just felt gross. And then maybe the second week they reintroduce yogurt and they're like, it's just not doing it for me anymore. Like, it, it's really weird. It's, it's life changing. But I don't want to pick on anybody too bad, but <laughs> that's my spiel on yeah. it. Um, so we talked about bread 
And I'll tell you my story on bread. Uh, Josh and I, did you film that video for me about the bread, Josh, or did I film it? You filmed it? Okay. So we filmed the video and I lean towards whole foods. Do you know what whole foods are? Whole foods are basically anything that you have to prepare that's not processed or in a package. So a salad is a whole food. Chicken is a whole food. Potatoes are a whole food, okay? So I lean towards most of the food that I eat is whole foods. So I'm an athlete. I'm an avid uh, road bike, road biker and marathoner. So it's hard to pack whole food when you're on a 30 mile bike ride. So a lot of times we would do a Dave's Killer Bread almond butter and honey sandwich with us. I had some friends here this summer. I lent Iggy's bike to my um, friend's husband and he's like, hey Melissa, there must be some stuff in the pack here. And he pulls out this Ziploc baggie and there's a sandwich in there. It's a Dave's Killer Bread sandwich and his, it, it hasn't disintegrated. It hasn't, there's no mold on it. Do you, do you, do you, are you and I, I said to Iggy, I go, when's the last time you rode this bike? It had been a year, and I know he's oh, telling okay. the truth because it was a race that we did, and it was a long race, so I packed some snacks. That's disgusting. That's what you're putting in your body. I will never buy that bread again because have you ever There's heard so that? There's so much preservatives, yep. it, it wouldn't yep. anything. Someone did a documentary on a um, McDonald's meal. It was still exactly the same five years later. When things don't mold and rot, you, those aren't the foods you want to put in your right. body. So, exactly. anyways, that's my spiel on that. If you're going to have bread, I would recommend sourdough because sourdough is fermented. And anything fermented um, moves through your digestive system. If things aren't coming out, they're turning to fat. Unless you're burning them off, which obviously Heath isn't because we've got some, some you know, health problems and joint issues. So... As far as bread goes, I would like to allow like one slice a day if we're reaching our goals. If we're not, we'll probably cut it out. And I don't know what Keith has um, told you, but I was suggesting like uh, slice, you know the sourdough loaves? Mm -hmm. So one slice is big. Mm -hmm. And maybe putting, um, toasting it, putting avocado and, you know, one or two eggs on it. And I would probably just um, either poach your eggs or um, use a nonstick cooking spray, I would probably watch your fats a little bit. If you were more towards your goal, I would probably allow you a little coconut oil in your pan, but I think that we should probably limit the fat. So no, did you try? Hard boiled eggs are good. Did you try the avocado toast? Yes, what I was doing a lot this week was, I didn't get sourdough bread yet, I had uh, cracked wheat. And you were um, using that? Using that up, uh, slice of that with um, avocado, a half on avocado on top of that, and uh -huh. then keep the rest of the half on the side. Okay. Plus a hard boiled egg. Uh huh. And when I ran out of the hard boiled eggs, I had a banana, but I also made a uh, blueberry and banana smoothie. Okay, good. And I had regular milk at the time, but it was. Okay. Know, but you're going to switch to yeah, coconut, milk, to for coconut your milk. Okay, what's in your smoothie? Do you have protein powder? No, just uh, okay. uh, blueberry, banana, nice. and um, I was using the stevia. Okay, good. Some stevia. Okay, that's good. I like that. And uh, the milk, and that was that okay. Was it. Okay. Um, so, Sherry, we're gonna pick your brain a little bit. So, first of all, not to get personal, but where do you stand with Keith? I mean, I, you guys are close. You're helping him with his his food. Your what what are your hopes for Keith? Where where are you at here? Oh, I'd like to get him to totally healthy. And yeah, put yeah, him to us too. And get out and do what he wants to yeah, do. Yeah, you know. us too. Mm -hmm. So you've been doing all his grocery shopping for how long now? Ever since he got hurt. <laughs> Boy, probably probably since early eighteen. Okay, yeah. so yeah, you've been involved. How many times a week do you shop for Keith? Once or twice. Okay. Well, okay. Really just once because what happens is I might have some stuff and I wait till she's got to go to the store for okay. her. 
and we kind of get both get of it at the same time. Okay. So, so it's okay. never really, okay, you're going to the store today for me. Okay. Type thing. It's usually okay. when she's got to go. We work so. together when we need it. Okay. okay. Where do you shop at? Walmart, Super One usually. Okay. And Sherry, what are you buying for Katie? Do you feel like the food you're buying is healthy? Not there for a while, no, because he was wanting pasta and okay. he was wanting rice, okay. and I knew that wasn't good. I appreciate your honesty. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, it's but everything I told you last Yeah, week, I know, so. I know. I mean, I can't help anybody if they don't tell me the right. truth, so, okay. And I've noticed lately, before he started seeing you good, he was trying to get the right, more of the right food. Obviously, he lost 30 pounds. He must have been doing something different. Oh, he didn't started. tell us that. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Which, and I don't want to buy it. April, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. So, okay. So, my goal with you, Sherry, is um, number one, we're going to meet every Tuesday from 10 to 11. If you can come, mm -hmm. I would love that. And I just want to teach you and educate you, and we'll kind of work together. And what works for one person doesn't work for another. So, I've had several people lose 100 pounds or more, and it's a process. We'll put together a plan and we'll meet each month and slowly we'll tweak it and we'll change it and we'll figure out what works for you. So, I mean, you can give some people, um, I'm not a huge fan of just, you know, oh, here, Keith, here's your foods list. That doesn't work. Right. And, and kind of like I told Keith, I said, you've worked with a lot of people in the hospital, experts in their field, but I think the more personal relationship and the approach that I have, and I know that it's worked because I've gotten people, um, the highest weight loss person I've had has been about 118, and it was in about 10 months, so I know exactly what to do. So I just want to educate you each week and figure out what Keith likes, not rip them out, but let's just change them mm -hmm. so that he succeeds, because I don't want him to be having all these horrible cravings and then just have a bin. So also, if you don't have it in your house, you won't eat it, and I really, really am against I don't hardly ever eat out. The reason I don't ever eat out is because it's hard for me to find Healthy the proper choice. foods. It's more of a struggle. I'd have to pull the menu up. Generally, this is no joke. When I go to a restaurant, there's usually one thing on the menu I can have. And I usually have to like omit the cheese. And um, I went to Capone's the other day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there's a reason. I'm not trying to be judgmental. Everybody in there was unhealthy. I was sitting there with my daughter, and I was like, this place is packed, and everybody in here is overweight. Yeah. Chowing down on pizza, watching sports, and so I go to the salads, and I said to the lady, what's, what's the best thing on the menu? What's the healthiest thing on the menu? And I said, I was going to go for the Thai chicken salad, and she goes, it's breaded. And I was like, well, good thing I asked. Yeah. Why the hell would I assume that a Thai chicken salad was breaded? Why? And then she's like, well, get the Popeye. And it was okay. It was spinach. The grilled chicken was really good. There was some, a um, uh, little bit of bacon and egg, and they do make their dressings in-house. But literally, you guys, there was one thing on this giant menu that I could eat. So if I, my best advice to you, Keith, is just prepare your own foods and don't be going to drive throughs So, um, did you go to any drive throughs last week? Yes. Okay, I, where'd you go? Um, where did I go? Oh, I went to McDonald's once. Okay. And then Sunday, a buddy that I watch uh, football with, he brought me two breakfast sandwiches. Okay. Before I could tell him, you know, about the changes I'm making. So. Okay. So what can we do to cut the drive through out. I know last week was a little bit weird because you yeah. didn't have your groceries and you kind of probably didn't really know what you were doing. So. Uh, the biggest thing for me is is convenience. Mm -hmm. um, like before when I was telling you that we made those, I call them our protein bars that we made. Yeah. It's so easy to just grab some of those mm -hmm. and head out the door, mm -hmm. grab my, my coffee, mm -hmm. and get on with my day because mm -hmm. I never really sat and like made breakfast or anything. Mm -hmm. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, get it, grab it, go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when that doesn't happen and then you get hungry and then that's when mm -hmm. you want to stop through the drive through or something. Mm -hmm. I understand. So trying to find something that I can grab and go mm -hmm. would be a lot, mm -hmm. would help a lot. Mm -hmm. Instead yeah. of sitting there and taking yeah. an hour and yeah. preparing a good breakfast mm -hmm. every morning and then going. I, I like okay. to 
I like to get up, shower, and be out the door within five minutes. Mm -hmm. It's what I like to do in the yeah. morning. So. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll give you some tips and tricks. Um, I'll give you a recipe for my green smoothie, which that's what I would like to see you add to your um, shake is some greens. And I'd like to see you add some protein because yeah. protein will keep you fuller longer. One thing I forgot to discuss with you last uh -huh. week, and I told you I'm on the, the blood thinner warfarin. Okay. There are a lot of dark greens that counteract that they're natural coagulants. Okay. That counteract that drug. Okay. And they told me that I'm supposed to try to stay away from. Okay. And not in the sense of not having it, but okay. it would be if you're going to have it, don't like overload on one day and then three days later overload on it again. It's okay. like it's the same small amount every day or try to steer away from it. And it's mainly the darkest greens like kale and broccoli okay. and a dark leafy. What uh, about spinach? Spinach is another one that's... Okay, so what realistically would be a, a good amount that you could have each day without affecting your... I don't know as far as ounces or cups okay, would okay. be concerned. But um, I told him I eat a lot of romaine lettuce, uh -huh. and he said that would be good. Okay. It's darker, but just eat the same amount each week. Okay. And don't go much darker than that. Okay. You know? What? When do you um, see the doctor again? Oh, that's uh, about once a month, and it's actually a, a it's called the anticoagulation. Okay. Uh, okay. Kootenai anticoagulation, and, okay. and he's a. Uh, they have, they're considered pharmacies, pharmacists. Okay. And what they do is they manage everybody's uh, um, INR. It's okay. called INR, and I don't remember what it stands for. Okay. But it's it's the uh, the quickness of your blood clotting. Okay, yeah. Um, related to the drug, uh -huh. the, the uh, blood thinner you're taking. Uh-huh. And like I said, if there's certain, certain, diff certain foods that mm -hmm. are natural coagulants that counteract the drug that you're taking mm -hmm. so it doesn't do any good that way. So. And then where where do you meet this guy? It's it's in the uh, old that medical building across from the hospital. Okay. Kootenai Health. It's okay. up there. It's, it's called the anticoagulation okay. clinic is what it's called. What does he do each month when he meets you? Does he check your blood again? Yep. Or? Every time it's a, okay. it's a check. It's like a diabetes okay. prick. Can I, put would it you on mind there. if I came to one of your appointments with you? Oh, I, I Okay. Don't. I don't care. I'd like that because then I could get a better idea. I'm working with a lady. Um, she's on a kidney transplant last year. I think I told Pete. Mm -hmm. And she comes every um, Tuesday as well. This week I'm meeting them on Thursday. And she has to go to dialysis four hours a day, three hours, three times a week. If she doesn't get this kidney, she's going to die on dialysis. And I have to tell you, to be honest with you, even though I know that there's dietitians and and people in there, I could probably rewrite the nutrition plan that they have for her. You don't recommend anything with sugar in it to it. She's also a diabetic, and they gave her foods list that included candy. But anyways, I just like to hear and see for myself what 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 are we talking about here? You know, so not because I don't believe you, but I want to hear what he's saying and. And I can't write a, a nutrition plan for you if I don't truly know. I'd like to ask him a few questions, maybe if we can use a um, powder green, something like that. It's a very small amount that you could put in your shake. So I just, I think it's really important to get your greens and your fiber. So, um, so. And, and he's not against that either. It's yeah. just, okay. if you do it, just it's okay. got to be the consistent same amount yeah. all the time. Yeah. Instead of just like, okay, I didn't have any any dark greens last week, and this week I had yeah. three days where I just overloaded. Them. Okay. Yeah. That's when it really throws the numbers okay. off. I want to pick his brain because I like I love learning. I'm a sponge, and maybe he can educate me and a little bit more. If you more. if you look online too, there's actually um, foods. It, there'll be lists of foods that are uh, um, counteract blood thinners like warfarin or. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll look that up. But I'd love to come to your appointment if I could. Yeah, be. I think my next one is the 19th, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, of September. Thursday. Yeah. Do you know what time? I'm pretty sure it's going to be between 9 and 10 sometime. That's okay. usually the time I go, but I'm okay. to check. I'm pretty sure it's okay. the 19th, though. Okay, I'd like to come. Do you usually go, Sherry? No. No. Okay. Um, so let's talk about your the bars that you're making. Are you making them together? 
Or do you usually make them? She I'm makes them. them. Oh, you make them. Okay. So I already kind of picked those apart a little bit. Um, obviously, with um, being the ways that Keith is, honey, and and just the number. If I could tell you anything, Sherry, it's sugar. Right. We cannot have any sugar that does not come from fruit. There's plenty of things in the world that you can make and have, like a banana. If you made a recipe with a banana, there's your sugar. So we can't have any sugar at this point. We can't have any honey. Um, I turned Keith on to the stevia. He got some at, at Super One, and we need to kind of lean toward that side. When you get to a healthy weight, we can slowly put it back in, but we're not going to reach our goal with that. That sugar is going to be a huge roadblock. Yeah, the reason, Sorry. sorry to interrupt, but the, the reason I first made those was to get away from all the process. Yep, I love it. And, and, uh, and, and you know. amen, because that is definitely a better choice than a granola bar from the store. Right. So that's a good swap. Yeah. So. What about applesauce? Is that... Um, applesauce is fine as long as it's... 100% applesauce with no sugar added because I actually have some in my um, fridge and I'll use it for an occasional recipe here and there. So, um, so that's great. So what you got to think is, all right, we we made our own and that's great, but Melissa doesn't like that sugar. And I sent Keith a new recipe oh, which okay. has no sugar. That's the one I sent you. And it's just with oh, the banana. Okay. Right. So, um, yeah. So definitely got rid of the. And to me, as a nutritionist, that's just overkill. A granola bar with dark brown, or with su brown sugar and honey, <laughs> let's just kill us. So to me, but okay. So I understand that. And the one thing that I think prevents people from their goals too is relying too much on snacks. If you have more rounded meals during the day, you won't want to snack as much. Keith said he was having about five. Well, that's not acceptable. A treat is a treat, and you have to treat it as that. I would say no more than one to two per day as a snack. So um, we're going to talk about um, your your food journal, and there's there's two types of people in the world. There's people that eat three square meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's people, well, there's probably several people, but for the most part, you can categorize people this way or people that do breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, and dinner, okay? And it doesn't matter what type of person you are, it matters what are your calories at the end of the day, okay? So how you got there really doesn't matter, okay? So what kind of person are you, Keith? Some days I'm, I'm the breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, and other okay. days I'm breakfast, lunch, dinner. Okay, so all right. I'm all over the board, kind okay. of depending on how okay. busy I am for okay. the day, so. And the one thing that we need to find with you <coughs> is consistency. And people tend to be more successful if they eat the same foods each week. If you eat the same foods each week and you make the same foods each week, it's not stressful because you know, okay, my granola bars are going to be my snack. I know my breakfast is going to be my smoothie or my avocado toast. I know my lunch is going to be a salad with some good protein and, and so forth. But it, it's just more calming and comforting if you know what you're going to eat. It's really stressful if you don't know what you're going to eat. I remember so. Brenda always kidding me when we go grocery shopping. She said, you get the same stuff all the time. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm kind of yeah. I'm kind of educated because the diets I've been on before yeah. of what to get and what not to mm -hmm. get. So that, that helps me yeah. already. So yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. I got no problem with eating the same stuff all good, the time. Good, good. And, and what we're going to do is we're just going to find the foods that you like, Keith, and just kind of stay there. And if, if fat loss is occurring, then we're just, we know we're moving in the right direction. Um, I don't want to put anybody, any diet down. I hate the D word, the D and the F word, diet <laughs> and fat. I really don't say that. But I don't want to put anybody, any nutrition plan that you've got, um, I don't necessarily want to say it doesn't work. But I will say it hasn't worked for you. That's a fair statement. It may work for someone else, but it hasn't worked for you. Well, what was not working for me is, is I was on no plan. Okay. That's, that's, okay. that's what was not working. Okay. 
Gotcha. <laughs> okay. I thought at one point you were were you on a shake bar diet? Is that why yes, you were eating five was, of those a day? Yeah, or, that's because okay. years ago when I was on that diet program from uh, Northwest Bike Bariatrics, uh-huh. it was their meal replacement uh-huh. deals. So I thought to myself, okay, if we can do this again and have mm-hmm. one of those as a meal replacement, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then those protein bars, mm-hmm. you know, that, that I made. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, we yep. came up with a recipe, but yep. we, she makes them for yep. me. But mm-hmm. I thought, well, okay, well, that would be kind of the same mm-hmm. concept as before. Because their, their product also had the nutritional value that they wanted in it, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like whatever means they put in it, mm-hmm. whether it's processed, but mm-hmm. gotcha. um, I'm not a fan off the of, fat or yeah, off I, the I, I'm not a fan of the, the program because A, it's processed, and mm-hmm. B, you can't drink shakes and eat bars for the rest of your life. Right. That's why I, I gotta be careful what I say on camera, but keto, if, when people ask me my opinion of keto, can you do that for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. Are, are you reaching your goals? More power to you. But realistically, you can't. So a keto is is just cutting out carbohydrates. It, yeah, super super low carb, high fat, moderate and protein. After a time, you end up going crazy because you're starting to crave. Yeah. Carbohydrates. Well, um, not you crazy, know, but correct me if I'm wrong. If anybody out there is having great success on keto, I'm happy for you. But the people that I have um, worked with came to me after failing at keto. And and that's from several clients. And the common denominator is that they lose all this weight in the beginning and they feel really good, but if they don't stay on keto, it comes back fast and furious. That's so that that's period. just, as a nutrition coach, I'm looking for long-term success. I'm looking for, you know, 12 foods that you can eat for the rest of your life. And, and, and let's figure out what those are. 12 foods that every time Sherry goes to the store, she knows she's buying chicken, she's buying salad, she's buying vegetables, she's buying apples, she's buying bananas, nut butter, sourdough, eggs. That's what we're looking for. And it's actually very simple mm-hmm. because our 12 foods, for instance, I'm just saying, are all whole foods. And they're all foods that we're going to prepare. Um, the one thing that I told Keith is you have time. You have time to save your own life. Mm-hmm. You have your sisters doing the shopping and we're going to get you moving along again so you don't have to have her do the shopping for you because that's taking away your independence. Don't mm-hmm. you feel like, are you not yes. shopping because you don't want to go to the store and be seen or? Well, there's it's probably just a bunch of reasons. And it's hard yeah, to walk around. In the beginning, it was, it was too hard to walk around the store. Mm-hmm. And then I got to the point where People bug me mm-hmm. <laughs> from years of bartending. I got to the point yeah. where I just I can't stand people anymore. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's my my bubble of people. You, you just know. wanted to gotcha. Yeah, the gotcha. rudeness or something is just gotcha. I just can't stand people anymore. Yeah. And then it got to the point where okay, and then the weight went back on. Then I didn't want to be seen again. Mm-hmm. And run gotcha. into somebody and I appreciate it that. shouldn't a mad or it shouldn't bother me about what people think because mm-hmm. it's not them. I don't mm-hmm. have to worry about it, but mm-hmm. people get judgmental, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, and I shouldn't care. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. these are the same people that saw me when I got down to 300 pounds, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. what happened to him? You know? mm-hmm. yeah. They don't know yeah. what goes well, on in a person's life. No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't judge you. I'm, I'm happy that you're And I'm out. sure 60, 70% of those people don't judge me either, but yeah. in my it's head. It's in your I'm, head. Yeah. yeah, well, you could over that. And then, it, and then it got to being really conven- convenient just when she had to go to the store to get yeah. something and say, well, you might yeah. as well grab yeah. mine too while yeah. you have it. So, yeah. so um, I think it's great that you're doing this now, Sherry, but definitely there's going to be a time when Keith's going to be able to get out on his own. But I just can't have you enable him with any bad food. So oh, it's just I, a big, huge no-no. Right. I would get what he'd want. Okay. And it's but from here on out, I told Keith I charge $100 an hour to coach people. If I'm going to coach you at no charge, you have to respect me. Oh, I, and you can't enable people. Yeah. And food addiction is serious. I take it really seriously. Food is killing people. Mm-hmm. If we don't change the pattern here, it's going to kill your brother. Mm-hmm. And it's as bad as heroin, as far as I'm concerned. I 
just super, super, super take it seriously. I think it's worse than drugs because you actually need food. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. need heroin. Mm -hmm. Stuff yeah. like that. It's and, and, and it's going to take a long time. And I used to be overweight. Um, obviously not as much as Keith, but for me, I'm a very, very petite girl. I'm a size three and I was up to a 15. So although I wasn't morbidly obese, I felt that, you know, insecurity, not wanting to be around people, not wanting to talk to people. Um, and I have to say that I, I still struggle every day, you know, to have willpower, to make good choices, to exercise. And also, I'm, I'm proud to say the number one thing that I think saved me and cured me of food addiction is having a relationship with food, a different relationship. I changed the way that I felt about food, and my athletic background probably helped because I was had to, to research, because I'm a marathon coach and I'm a marathoner, is how this food fuels my body. What can I eat in the morning to run thir a 13 mile or 13.1 half marathon? Mm -hmm. So you have to really get into your psyche. And that's why I gave Keith the journal is, you know, just, just jot things down and that way you can kind of look back about wh where were you, where was your headspace last week? You know, a year from now, you know, I'm going to ask you this, where, three words that describe how you're feeling now and three, three words that describe how you're feeling then. I mean, you have to really have a different relationship with food and know that food's always going to be there. You can afford food, thankfully, and there's a lot of people out there that are starving and can't afford food. Um, and the abuse of the food is what's gotten us all to where we are today with being overweight. So you, you have to think of it as, um, also I think about, it's not my last meal. So I know all day long I can have three meals and two snacks, and that's enough. That's enough for anybody. Um, what am I going to do with the time in between that I'm not eating? I'm going to drink water, a lot of water, especially Keith. He knows how much water he's supposed to drink. Um, I'm going to do other things to keep my mind off eating is what you kind of have to just start figuring out. And I don't like the feeling of being very full. Overeating stretches your stomach out. So essentially, we have to shrink our stomach fat. Once you get your stomach shrank back to normal, your brain will um, want a normal amount of food. When you stretch it out, it just can't stop thinking about food. You just yeah. want to eat around the clock. <laughs> Are noticed, these true statements? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've noticed since April, since I've been trying to change things up again, that if I eat too much, I, I get that feeling that mm -hmm. I am too full and I don't like it anymore mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's, it's not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. So I, that's mm -hmm. why I've tried to change my food portions. Mm -hmm. Good. What I'm eating. So like Good. I said, if I get too full and I yeah. get, I'm just like, oh, mm -hmm. I just can't stand it. I don't like the feeling anymore. Yeah. I always tell people, if you're belching, stop eating. <laughs> it's happened to me. It's a real thing. If you start burping, your, your stomach is only so big. It means you're up to here. It's starting to come up yeah. through your esophagus. If you're belching, that's a red flag. Stop eating. And you know what's funny? My twin sister, um, she's here visiting right now, and we, uh, Iggy and, and Melanie and I ha had a really nice lunch together outside, and it was a salad with a nice piece of fish from the Oval Office. If you ever want something to go, that's probably the one of the few places that I would recommend. And it was a really hearty piece of sea bass, and it was excellent, mm -hmm. um, seasoned well. And Melanie and I both ate ours, which was fine. Iggy was full and he stopped eating and left a little chunk there. And Melanie commented when he wasn't around, wow, that's really cool. Iggy stops eating when he's full. And I said, that's funny that you observed that. He's always stopped eating when he's full and he's never had a weight problem. And that's hard. If it's really good, you just want to keep eating. Oh, yeah. So when you can get to the point where you're like, a lot of times if I do go to a restaurant, obviously the portions are huge, and I know that I need about four ounces of meat, protein, and eight ounces of fish. I'll take my plate, and with my fork, I'll, I'll separate it. And I'll eat my half, and I'll 
sit for a minute and then I'll drink a full glass of water and then I'll, I'll take a few minutes and think, do you really want that other half? Are you satisfied? And if I do, let's say maybe in an hour or an hour and a half, I'm feeling a little bit hungry. I would rather do that. Why? Because it satisfies you enough to keep going. I don't want to stretch my stomach out either because then all that hunger comes. I just kind of have this kind of, you know, small portions all day and it just, it works. But the minute I overdo it, you know, those Thanksgiving meals and all that, then all that comes back again. And I've been working for 20 years to get a grip on my food. So I'm just like, okay, I'm satisfied. If an hour and a half comes and I want to eat again, I can eat that other half, but I don't want to put all that in at one time. So, um, how's the water? I've been drinking a lot more this Yay, week. Good. That's okay. Enough where I haven't been paying attention how close it's getting to bedtime, and I get up a couple <laughs> nights or a couple times a night, and it's like I hate that. I know. I want to wake up and I, go back over and go to sleep. I know. Instead of wake up and like I have to get up and go to the bathroom. Yeah. Just yeah. So I gotta get it all in during the day if and make makes, sure it's not yeah. later. If it makes night. you feel any better, I probably get up two or three times a night. Yeah, I got up twice last night. Drinking water, so. <laughs> It's good. It's good. Your skin looks good. Yeah. I've always been a water drinker. Good. Ask her. I've always been on them yeah. about not drinking enough water. Yeah. So it, yeah. I do. I mean, I know I'm overweight, but I get a lot of compliments when they ask me how old I am. Yeah. Say, oh, you're not that old. Yeah. And I contributed mostly to drinking yeah, you don't a lot of water. Right. Yeah. So Keith, let's look at your food journal. Um, you, you didn't do my fitness pal. No, I didn't. I've got it loaded. But I want you to. I'm terrible at it. I told you it's I was, okay. so it's going to be right. tough to... Okay. All right. So, wow, you have nice handwriting. He does, doesn't he? Okay. So, 9-4. Like I said, it not... It was, it's, I love this. This the, is great. Okay, get everyone on board with my change in health. Who's everyone? Uh, my roommate, okay, my cool. family, uh, somebody I watch football with. Sweet. Support? Yeah. Cool. I like and they're, it. They're all on my side. I Sweet. just, just got to let them know yeah. what's going on. Awesome. Okay. Like he brought me two breakfast sandwiches and Sunday. And said, no. I, well, I ate them, but it's okay. I said, well, I'm going to make changes now. Don't so. look back. You're not going there. So. And he's not, I mean, he's a big guy too, but not, okay. you know, not like I am. So, so maybe next time we can maybe just make a healthy breakfast together. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Um, all right, and long struggle to get changed. We're just making the process of getting out of the mentality of eating the, the food that I was doing before, which I've already kind of got a three month kickstart on. So, okay, cool. Safe That's on. nice. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm really glad that I caught you at yeah. a good, good headspace. Yeah, so, um, busy day avocado, two hard boiled eggs. That you told me about that smoothie, salad with ham, lunch meat, cucumber, and tomato. Um, bad decision for dinner, pasta with shrimp, mushroom, and onion. Um, the ham, I would probably stay away from because yeah. it's sodium. So, yeah. I would definitely um, push more towards um, turkey. And it really is hard and to find. Go ahead. I was going to ask you, the uh, lunch meat was what I was getting Yeah. through the deli at Walmart. Uh -huh. And I know it's still processed. Yes. But what do you I suggest? Would, I would, the best one, I won't eat it because I'm super... It's a, I'm a little bit picky, but I, the, the problem is, is they put sugar in everything, but if you want to find the best lunch meat in a deli with the lowest amount of sugar, Genio. Genio. And, and, and look for oven baked. Okay. okay. Cause so I went with Primadella for a long time because yeah. there was no pre preservatives, yeah. no additives. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. I was on that kick yeah. for such a long time. And don't be afraid to ask them to hand it over the counter and look at it. And what you're looking for, Keith, look for the sugar. Obviously, we don't want a bunch of crappy ingredients, but Jenny O is a pretty mm -hmm. reputable company. Yeah. I would say they probably make a couple different ones. Um, so I would go with that. The uh, pasta. Oven roast, did you say? Yeah, oven Maybe roasted. Yep, go ahead. Um, I want to show you something here. Keep two while you're talking. So, Jenny O, I was thinking about your friend coming over. They also make a um, chorizo. So. I've seen that. Before. My sister uh, is coming over tomorrow. And the one thing, Sherry, that I do not buy is I don't buy meat that's over 10 grams of fat. Generally, nobody on my health plans gets 
to eat chorizo. Chorizo is very high in fat. It's something that my husband grew up with. Mm -hmm. Now I found this and it's chorizo made with turkey. And I'll let this one slide because it has nine grams of fat. Wow. So it, it's, it's almost there, but yeah, can we have chorizo on eggs and maybe two corn tortillas with your friend on Sunday? Sure, why not? So I could make those up in the freezer. Then I yeah, them. yeah. So um, I'm gonna show you another one um, that I buy. I know they have these at Walmart, you guys, and I stockpile these. Um, is this brand, Icernios. Um, I'm gonna give you these keys so you can take them. Um, Icernios, this is a hot Italian chicken sausage, and they have a few different sausages. You would never in a million years know that this is made out of chicken. These people know how to season things. Like this already has all the garlic and spices. You don't need to add anything. So this one, Sherry, three grams of fat. I super duper duper approve of this one. Chicken sausage. That's the chicken, yeah. You guys can have both See, of these. See, I'm going to transition. Yeah. She knows that I, I went to eating ground turkey instead of ground mm -hmm. beef mm -hmm. years ago because of that. Okay, it was good. A lot leaner good, 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 good. Yeah, definitely with your situation, I would stay away from red meat. I hardly ever eat red meat. But I'll tell you what I do, Keith, is I take this and I would, I would make like six patties and I cook them in the pan and then just have them ready. Mm -hmm. So you could get up in the morning, you could grab one of those patties, a hard boiled egg. Maybe a slice of sourdough and be on your way. So something quick that you can have those. So Thank the you. thing, yep, you're welcome. The thing you gotta do is just uh, take take what you like. I mean, who doesn't like you know fatty breakfast meats? And you yeah. gotta just you know make a better choice. So um, okay, so the the pasta. Um, that another was, thing that was too. That was like my last supper type okay. meal. I'm not gonna be having. Okay. Did you make it? Yeah. Okay. So if you want pasta, I could probably recommend um, spaghetti squash. Have you ever tried making spaghetti squash? I have, and it didn't turn out good. Okay. It, it, it takes a bit. Mushy. I'm just kind of kind of write some notes of things that I I am actually making some tomorrow. So I'll maybe keep a portion back for you, throw it in my freezer, and then when I see you next week, I'll give it to you. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if it's prepared right, and I am a good cook, I'm a chef. Yes, I had an ex-girlfriend like that she was a vegetarian, and she, uh -huh. she made me spaghetti with spaghetti squash, yeah. which was perfect, so yeah. I tried it, and it was just, yeah, you it was just, all mushy, I might as well yeah, eat squash. Yeah, 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 that's the problem, either people undercook it or overcook it, so, um, yeah, I've gotten to the point. I have a recipe for a chicken fettuccine alfredo, dairy-free, over spaghetti squash, you guys would die for. I'm gonna send it to you. Um, and the fettuccine is made with um, cashews, Ooh. soaked in water, nutritional yeast, and um, what's the other thing? An almond milk. Mm. And everybody's I've served that's, it that's to is like pasta? It, that's the sauce. Oh, the sauce. Yeah. Can you believe that? So mm -hmm. I'll give you some good sauce. Yeah, spaghetti okay. squash, you said. Spaghe okay. Over spaghetti squash or acorn squash also kind of shreds like that. So um, same breakfast as previous day, handful of gluten-free tortilla chips, three chicken nuggets. Was that your McDonald's? Well, we, we were busy running okay. around that day. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> it's not her fault I took them. I can, no, I can say fine. no, but I was hungry. Yeah, and yeah, I appreciate your honesty. Um, finished dinner from the night before. Same breakfast as previous two days with scrambled eggs. Lunch, chicken strip salad, breaded. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't approve of that, right. but we'll move on. Dinner, finished three chicken strips. Okay. Scrambled eggs, avocado, and a smoothie, tuna salad you made? Yes. What kind of mayonnaise? Um, it was regular mayonnaise, and that was one of my biggest questions. Okay. On um, I'll tell either you. Either a substitute, or I know there's that olive oil mayonnaise. This is the only one that I would approve, and I get it. Do you shop at Costco at all? I is not the anymore. Chosen Foods mayo, and it is made with avocado oil. I, I've been meaning to try some of that stuff, so. Do you want to write that on your? They, yeah, they, you just write it on yeah, this for me. They probably, I'll put it next to your cheetah salad. They probably have it at Walmart. Um, if you guys need anything at, um, okay, I'll put avocado oil in there. If you
you guys need anything at Costco, just tell me and I'll get it for you. Chosen Foods. Um, they might have a different brand, but you, what you're looking for is... The avocado oil. Yep, mm -hmm, I said it on there. It's made out of avocado oil. The one thing you want to stay away from, Sherry, is you want to stay away from corn. There is no nutritional value in corn. Um, do I think it's okay to have a 50 calorie corn tortilla once in a while? Yeah, but why does corn come out whole in your food? Yeah. Yeah. Because your body doesn't digest it. Right. So the, uh, here, here's another uh, fun fact for you. Um, what are these big companies um, putting in your food as a filler? Because it's cheap. Corn, corn syrup, high fructose corn. I mean, it's unbelievable, and it's so bad for you. So, yeah, anything with canola oil, and yeah, you want to stay away from that. I've already um, been kind of educated on the high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. and the corn. Anytime you got to add something to something like that as mm -hmm. a sweetener, it's just mm -hmm. good. It's just like uh, ketchup is another thing. Yeah, no sugar. Why, why do you need anything besides tomato sauce? And, yeah. And yeah. whatever. I mean, there might be a little bit sweetener, but they add that. High fructose yeah. corn syrup. Good luck they, finding ketchup without sugar. They do make it though. Mm -hmm. They Hunts, do. Hunts makes it. Good. I but I don't. I mean, it's what I buy okay. when I get ketchup. So That's good. Um, also, Keith, you could add avocados to your salad. Yeah. No. And instead of mayonnaise, I'm not a huge fan of mayo. I've had this forever and I hardly use it. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm you are that. okay. Yeah. So I'd rather have you have that. I did, I have never been a, a huge fan of mayo. Um, also, um, if fat loss is going to occur, we need to watch our fats. And when you get into logging your fitness pal, um, which we are going to do, so I'm planting that seed for you, we're going to look at, it, 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 as you log your food, it gives you a pie at the end of the day with three things, macros, which is a fancy word for proteins, fats, and carbs. That's what your food is made up of. So in the pie, we're going to see what percentage of Keith's day comes from fats, proteins, and carbs. I'm going to give you my expert advice of the macros that I want you to have. So then, not to be jumping too far ahead, then that's where we need to tread lightly with 11 grams of fat for one tablespoon. If we have two tablespoons, that's 22 grams of fat. I'm going to probably tell you you can only have 30% of your daily um, calories from fat and that's where it's all going to come together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Have you ever done anything like that no. before? I, I logged my it. food for 15 years wow. before I felt comfortable enough to not log. I will still log if I'm um, trying to reach a goal, if I have a photo shoot or if I'm putting on a few pounds, I will log again. It is the only way to see the clearer picture. When I, I can see where it would be but I just I, I'm terrible at it. It's a, we all are, but you can't get better. It's, you just know like, it's just like school and homework. One of the reasons I'm terrible at uh -huh. it is I had so much success with that one diet, and I never logged anything, and I still lost all that weight. I mean, I the transition period over the years, I put it all back on, yeah, but that's why I had it in my head. I don't need mm -hmm. to log because I did it once already. What one day? The, through the bariatrics Northwest and the meal replacements. It, it worked at the time. I but understand. I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's okay. And we I kept it off for a lot of years too. Yeah, so good. it's. But we just we knew we just need to be right. And you have time. Mm -hmm. So even if you came here next week and you logged one day, I would be happy. It's okay. We just got to get. Happy it. If I could we got it. And, and you'll get to where your fats are at. It. You'll get to where you can pull the same foods over. You just have to, and you can message me with any questions. We can, next week if you'd like to, we could sit here and, and log one day in together and I can show it to you. Mm -hmm. Let's make that our goal. How's that sound? Okay. Because like I said, I've got the app. Give me one full day. I kind of need to know like how much. Like I like that you, yeah, it, ounces and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that'll be our, our homework next Tuesday. We'll log one full day of your food. Okay. And then we'll look at your macronutrients. Um, I think it... I was telling Keith last week to have a well-balanced meal. Um, let's say your avocado toast, your carbs is the sourdough, and your protein is the egg, and your fat is the avocado. So that, that's a nice balance. Um, my goal with my food is to make it fuel me for a long time. So this green smoothie will last me for four hours. So that's always your goal. If you're eating a carb by itself, 
you're going to be hungry in an hour. I mean, you have to combine foods together. Um, of course, healthy protein, healthy carbohydrates. Also, carbohydrates, everybody thinks carbs come from just breads and pasta. There's carbohydrates in fruits and vegetables as well. Mm -hmm. So when you start to look at your macros and you look at 40% of your day came from carbohydrates, it's okay as long as most of those carbohydrates were fruits and vegetables. So I always call them good carbs. And good bad carbs, carbs, yeah, yeah. Complex carbohydrates, sweet potatoes. Um, okay, okay. The football buddy lost meal replacement from old diet program. Okay. Breakfast bowl, no cheese. Good job. Was that just like a potato sausage? Uh, yeah, potato sausage, bacon, eggs. Okay. Um, the sausage, I'd like to see you switch over to this. Um, probably the uh, salt, the sodium it takes, probably. Um, it's the fat. The what fat? kind of sausage was it? I don't know. It was, it's probably the fat. Yeah. Okay. Bacon, what I'd like to see you do is um, nitrate free and sugar free, if you can. Um, I'm going to put that next to your breakfast bowl, okay? Um, and sugar free. My nieces get, because um, they're both vegetarian, uh -huh. and they get bacon. Um, I don't know what brand it is, I haven't looked, but it's, it's pretty flat and it replaces the bacon, so I'm just it's wondering. It's like vegan? They're not vegan, but they are vegetarian, vegetarian so they don't it's, eat meat. Yeah, it's some kind so of it's a plant based. Oh. Or I don't yeah. think it's soy. Oh. I, what if I got the name of it and brought it next? Yeah, if, if Keith likes it, um, if you have a hard time, how do you feel about turkey bacon? I am up to trying it. Okay. The only thing, I'm kind of more of a fan of, I do eat bacon, I don't eat a lot of bacon, um, not every day, and maybe like for me, like two pieces, maybe for you, three pieces. But I almost, as a nutrition coach, would rather see you find clean bacon than turkey bacon, because turkey bacon has a lot of crap in it. <laughs> it's, it's, look at what it looks like. Doesn't it look like a smashed okay. floor scraping mess, right? Right? I right? Really so, I mean, and, and also, again, if Sherry, if you start shopping and you find, oh my gosh, Melissa, I'm having a hard time with this, just tell me, because I buy mine from Pilgrim. And I can get, you know, pick it up for you guys and put it in the freezer. So, um, but bacon is definitely right up there with the granola bars. It's a treat. You can't abuse it. It has to be. I don't really, ex with the exception of it being on a sandwich, uh -huh. which I'm not going to be eating a lot of sandwiches uh -huh. anymore, or in a salad. Uh -huh. I really don't eat a lot of bacon. Yeah. Could, yeah. Brenda was a lot, she was always getting bacon uh -huh. and having bacon there for anything, yeah, I'll yeah. sprinkle it on the salad uh -huh. or whatever. Yeah, and that's okay. So I don't really eat. Yeah. I mean, I love bacon. Yeah. I could eat bacon all day long. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I obviously. I don't actually have it a lot at the house. Fair so. I'll show you guys that something I made this week. Um, I made, do you know what a quiche is? Yeah, but okay. I've never. So usually for me, because I don't do gluten, obviously I don't do the crust. So I made this, um, sweet potato quiche, and what I did is I took two sweet potatoes, and I grated them, and I pushed them in the bottom of the pie pan, salt and pepper, and then cooked them. When they came out of the oven, they, they looked and tasted like some awesome hash browns. So mm -hmm. that was my crust, and then I whipped together um, eggs, kale, this has a, a whole thing of bacon in it, um, no cheese, um, some onions, garlic, um, hot sauce, Dijon mustard, and Brad's amino acid, which is a replacement for like a soy sauce. I already did it. Or, you do? Okay, good job. Good job. Okay. So just know that the reason I'm successful is because I'm, I'm still eating quiche. I mean, this was great. I put a little bit of salsa and a couple that of... That looks delicious, by it, the way. Yeah. I'll, I'll be all over that. I'll give you a piece. Um, so yeah, just... I want to kind of get you guys into the mindset, I'm not trying to kill you. I'm not trying to make you feel deprived. I mean, you're going to be bragging to your friends about these awesome recipes that you're making and, and that they're healthy. It's going to feel really good. Um, okay, chicken thighs with cauliflower rice. Did you make cauliflower rice, Keith? 
I did not. Um, my roommate now, she made um, chicken thighs with rice. Uh -huh. And then it was she already had mixed it. She said, there's some dinner on the stove. Oh. That was the chicken thighs with rice. Oh, gotcha. I made cauliflower on my side to put oh. it in with it. Okay, good. So, good, good, good. Okay. So exercise. And it wasn't a really good brand of rice either. It's white rice. So okay. Was, Which, honestly, it's... I'm not going to be buying any. I'm not against white rice, um, but it's just one of those things where... Um, we'll see if it fits into your, to your macros. If you only have 40% carbohydrates during the day, we'll see. Um, I like a little bit of rice. I do like jasmine rice, um, brown basmati rice, brown white, quinoa, couscous. <laughs> but you have to be very sparing with it, and we have to be reaching our goals. So it definitely has to be portion controlled. Rice adds up very quickly with the carbohydrates mm -hmm. and calories. Um, would you be satisfied with a, a serving of rice is the thing a lot of people are like. Some people, especially women that don't have any muscle, their serving of rice is a quarter of a cup and it's almost like cinnamon. They're like, why I, I can live without it. Yeah, so, so, but I don't think it's, I think long term, it, I, I don't think it's a deal breaker. I mean, although I'm pretty paleo whole 30, I say pretty because I don't want somebody to send me an email and say, I saw in your recipes. I mean, there are a few things that I like to have with, with rice. For you right now, Keith, I'd say if we could lean more towards the cauliflower rice, I think that would be good. Um, is this your store list? Yeah. Okay. And I wanted you to look it over because okay. I know there's going to be some things you'll... Um, so, I'm going to put cauliflower... I couldn't get your right. pen to work, work on my... What were you writing? <laughs> that was that chorizo. Oh, You're going to give me that. I'm going to so. give you that. Okay. Um... Sherry, if, if Keith is going to have a lot of this in his life, um, did you say you shopped at Costco? I'm sorry. No. No, okay. Um, I can get you guys some. So if you guys show up and have a list for me, I'm totally open to it because I pretty much make all of my own food. I cook all the time, and I go to the store all the time. So grabbing a couple things for you guys is not a big deal. It's just cheaper. Um, and is it cauliflower rice, or do you make your own rice out of cauliflower? I don't. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, I, I, it's a I've mess. You have to use. I've looked at a so, lot of recipes for yeah, it. It's like my so, gosh, it takes two hours to. Yeah, so um, maybe you buy a couple bags at Walmart this week and play around with it. But they, um, they don't have it at Walmart cauliflower rice, do they? Yeah, they do in do the they? freezer section. But you'll you'll Where see one little that? bag is just. What's up with these fancies? One little bag is um, freezer section. Okay, so, all right, you guys. Everybody watching, we're getting close. I know this is a long one here, but we're going to talk about exercise, and then we're going to wrap it up. So, 9-4, 10-minute <coughs> uh, walk, which is great because I'm pretty sure we were on camera when Keith said he couldn't even, you know, ha it was a hard just to get out of bed. Were we ever rolling on the camera, Keith? Yeah. Okay. Clean house. Um, what do you mean broken? Broken uh, up in between thirty minutes. It was minutes like or? thirty minutes. Yeah. Okay. Do some work because okay. she does the majority of my deep cleaning in the house. Okay, gotcha. So she did some cleaning, and then I get up and I do some. Okay, things gotcha. And sit back down and. Okay. Okay. It might have told thirty minutes. Okay, gotcha. Ten and, minute light stretch. Go ahead, Keith. And right. the stretching on that—that's just sitting down. That's not standing up. That's okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I've coached trying, a lot of people. Trying to loosen my back up. Yeah. I've coached a lot of people that never stand up. Um, 10 minute walk in the driveway, 10 minute light stretch, 20 to 30 minutes clean house, 9-7 bad day with knees and back hurting. Okay. 10 minute stretch, 10 minute walk. Good. 10 minute stretch. Okay. So I really like this because I'm seeing a lot of movement. Um, we're going to wrap it up on camera here and then when we're not rolling, I'm going to talk to Keith a little bit more about this. But um, Thank you, Sherry, for being our guest, and we hope that you can join us each week. Um, the more support that we can give Keith, um, the more successful he's going to be. I think he obviously did his worst when he was, you know, isolating himself from people. So I appreciate you being along for the ride and, and also being on camera. So um, thanks, Keith, for coming back this week. <laughs> I didn't scare you too bad. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy um, watching Keith's journey to uh, a healthy lifestyle and you know what once and for all um, getting this weight off and and feeling 100%
positive for once that it's going to stay off. That when you get to that point where I have, and that's why I, I want to, you know, save the world is because I know that it's, it's a science. It's not a secret. I have 20 years of education and there's no doubt in my mind I can get keys to his goals. So as always, I hope to connect with you, inspire you, and motivate you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.